Welcome, everyone. Thank you all for uh, coming this afternoon. Uh, with us, of course, is Congressman uh, Sean Patrick Maloney, Assemblywoman um, Aileen Gunther, and I think that's Rich Mayfield way over on the side there. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and along with Andrew Green from our Common Council, Andy uh, Cherry Kleiner from our Common Council, and other members of the public and county government, Ms. Blumenthal from the Middletown School Board. Um, our Congressman has a very exciting announcement today about not only Middletown, but the region. We'll let him make the announcement. So uh, without further ado, our Congressman, Sean Patrick Maloney. Hey, thanks, Joe. Uh, thank you very much. Well, this is a fun thing, Rich. This is the, this is the second um, announcement like this today, but uh, I'm thrilled to be here in Middletown um, to announce that I'm introducing legislation to rename the Middletown Post Office after Representative uh, Ben Gilman. Um, uh, you know, it was just a couple uh, months back that, uh, that we lost both uh, Congressman Gilman and um, Congressman Hinchy. Um, and together, they served the Hudson Valley extraordinarily well. Um, earlier today, I was at Locust Grove near Poughkeepsie announcing legislation to rename the Hudson Valley Heritage Area after Maurice Hinchy. He was the author of the legislation that created the Heritage Area. Uh, but ben Gilman was a co-sponsor, I should note. And uh, they served together in Congress, and they represent a style of service that I have tried to emulate. I can't go anywhere in Orange County without having somebody say to me, uh, be like Ben Gilman. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's pretty good advice. And I had the opportunity to visit with him uh, on many occasions to get to know uh, his wife, Georgia, uh, to see him at Castle Point in his final years, to make sure that he was getting the care he deserved. And, and I'm thrilled to be joined uh, by Mayor DeStefano, Rich Mayfield, who, who, who worked for Congressman Gilman, uh, and of course my friend Aileen Gunther, and I want them to say a word as well. But I should tell you, um, you know, we could use more Ben Gilmans in Congress right now. Um, he was one of a kind, of course. He was born in Poughkeepsie in 1922, uh, lived to be 94 years old. Um, he served his country in World War II uh, in the Army Air Corps, uh, th flew 35 missions over Japan. That's something. Uh, won the Distinguished Flying Cross and uh, the Air Medal with Oak Leaf Clusters. And of course, came back to New York, uh, went to the Wharton School, went to New York Law School, um, served in the Attorney General's office, uh, served in the State Assembly, mm -hmm. which all great representatives do at some point or another. Um, uh, and uh, looking at Aileen Gunther, and, and then of course was elected to Congress in 1972 and served um, the community for 30 years. Some members of his staff are here today. Uh, probably just seems like yesterday. Um, and I can tell you, uh, you know, what distinguished his service was of course his, his extraordinary work in international relations and foreign affairs. Uh, Congressman Gilman understood the world the way few members of Congress uh, have ever understood it, and of course made significant uh, uh, contributions uh, in terms of our foreign policy in, in South Asia, particularly um, our relationship with India. But the thing I always hear about with Congressman Gilman is that he was a champion for his constituents. Mm -hmm. That if you brought a problem to Congressman Gilman, that problem got solved. And that part of his service has been what I've tried to impress on my own staff, is that no matter how much we do, no matter how many big issues we work on, no matter what we do around the world. If we're not fundamentally helping people who walk in the door, we're not doing our jobs. And that is the standard that Ben Gilman set. And when I think about Congressman Gilman, I think about a time when we, when we still believed we had people in government who wanted to make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, and I can tell you from personal experience, those people are still in government. But we seem like we've lost our faith in uh, in the government itself. And it's, of course, all of us who have to restore that trust. And it's public servants like uh, Congressman Gilman who did so, so beautifully. People may not realize um, that in his time in Congress, especially the early years, there was a similar distrust in government. He, after all, was elected two years before Watergate. And so part of what he and others, and continuing down to the present day, have had to do is show by their own commitment and their own hard work and their own results that that the government can still work for all of us, that it can represent us, that it can be a force for good in our lives. Um, but of course, it's only as good as the people in it. And he was one of the good ones. 
Uh, and so I, in looking at this, I also discovered, and Rich Mayfield can talk about this probably better than I can, that Congressman Gilman also served on the uh, Post Office Oversight and Civil Service Reform Committee, whatever it's called. We have a new name for it now. We call it the Government Reform and Oversight Committee. But he actually cared a lot about the U.S. Post Office. He understood the role it played in people's lives, and he was, uh, he was impressed that it was the only part of government that literally touched every American. And so I'd like to think he'd be happy that, uh, that we would honor him in this way. I'm particularly delighted that my friend Congressman Pete King, a Republican, has uh, signed on as an original co-sponsor with me on this legislation, uh, which should improve its chance of becoming law, because I don't want to stand <coughs> here and make this announcement and not get it done. Um, it's also one of the reasons why I thought it makes sense to <coughs> honor Marie Sinchi and Ben Gilman with <coughs> companion pieces of legislation that might have a chance of bipartisan support. Um, and I think it's fitting that that a Democrat honor a Republican who served his community so well. I had the opportunity to eulogize Congressman Gilman uh, at his service at uh, Temple uh, Sinai not long ago. I see Paul is here. Thank you for being here. And um, and I and I want to extend um, uh, greetings from Georgia as well. His wife, who's smart enough to be in Florida, I believe, uh, this time of year, uh, we should all <laughs> seek to be. Um, but uh, she sends her best and is excited and thrilled that uh, we'd be honoring uh, Congressman Gilman as well. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to, uh, to someone who, who knows a lot about uh, Ben Gilman and his service to our community, and that's uh, Rich Mayfield. Thank you, Congressman. It's uh, an absolute delight to spend a few, time, a few moments here in our favorite city, Middletown, and I'm happy to say it's my favorite city. I spend a lot of time here, and I started my career here. But, you know, uh, Congressman Maloney is so correct. The ability to connect with individuals on an individual basis and fight and advocate for that particular constituent, I think, was probably the hallmark of uh, Ben Gilman's time in Congress. He was very tough on us as staff members, and there's a number of staff people here, and uh, you'll introduce them in just a second, but uh, he really made it very, very clear that we were here for the people, and Andy Zaretsky is currently the town clerk of the town of Newburgh, and he has a sign, this office belongs to the people, the town of Newburgh. Well, that was uh, a lesson that he learned very well during his time with Congressman Gilman, and you're right, uh, Congressman, uh, Mr. Gilman was uh, deeply dedicated to the United States Postal Service. He truly believed that it was an institution that helped to bind the country together. Some of us are young enough to remember the excitement of running to the mailbox every day. You never knew what surprise was coming. I remember getting chickens in the mail. I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember getting chickens in the mail, but we did. And you can still get chickens in the mail from the Postal Service. It is definitely right. Quaker Oak Company used to sell them. But at any rate, uh, this is a great day. And I'll close it with one of the five Ben Gilman jokes that we've all come to love and appreciate over the years. So the congressman is out campaigning in a nursing home somewhere, and he's with Joe DiStefano. And, you know, Mayor DiStefano, he thinks he knows everybody that there is, and he does. But so they're out shaking hands, going through it, and they come up with a sweet little old lady in a wheelchair. And the mayor comes over and says, do you know who I am? She looks up, shrugs her shoulders. Don't feel bad. It happens to all of us. Go up to the front desk. They'll tell you who you are. <laughs> <laughs> now, to tell people who there are a couple people here in the room, Carmel Wilson used to manage our Middletown office, and now she works for Mrs. Mrs. Gunther in the assembly. She's been a great uh, staff member, caseworker, knows more stuff than you'll ever know. Andy, we've already, he's famous all across the county. But two, three guys, one, two, three, that helped to contact the congressman's office to put this, uh, plant this seed was John McCary, our county director of real property, Behind him is Brian Fitzpatrick, who was one of the biggest bosses to ever come out of the United States Postal Service. He ran everything from Albany to Manhattan, big guy. And then behind him, Mike Russo, Ralph Russo's father, who um, spent so many years with Congressman Gilman. That's what I said. He, there he corrected me again. He's been doing that for 30 years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, uh, but they all did speak to uh, Congressman about trying to get this moving. So. We're very grateful hey. as former staffer and, and citizens. Thanks, we Rich. appreciate what you're doing. Thanks a lot. And I also want to thank you so much, Rich. That was great. Um, 
<laughs> there are days when I need to go to the front desk to find out who I am. Uh, I want to invite uh, Aileen Gunther up here. You know, um, um, I'm actually struck by the fact that uh, it was Joe DiStefano and Aileen Gunther who were the first two elected officials to support me when I ran for Congress in 2012. They maybe uh, don't remember that or want to forget it, but uh, but, <laughs> I haven't, but, <laughs> but I haven't forgotten it. And uh, I appreciate their support then. It's always great to stand with them now. And um, Aileen, why don't, you, why don't you say a few words? Uh, you forgot to mention that you were also one of the first supporters of me when I first ran for the New York uh, State Assembly after my husband passed away. So I have a picture here of Ben Gilman. And, you know, my father-in-law, Jake Gunther, was a good friend of Ben Gilman. Uh, he represented our area for, you know, some time. And I, I will tell you that engaging with... Ben Gilman, you know, sometimes when people are elected to offices like uh, the congressional office, they have airs of grandeur. And Ben was never like that. You could go to a pancake breakfast, a fireman's dinner. He was just who he was. And you know what? I think that it's important, and he's a role model to me, to be yourself, know that you're a very lucky person to represent so many people. And he knew how lucky he was, and he loved what he did, and he showed it each and every day. So we miss Ben, and this is something that uh, I feel proud to endorse, and hopefully this legislation will be passed in his name and to honor him for all the work he has done. So thank you. Uh, well, that's it. This is real simple. But I'm tempted to say if anyone uh, else who knew them or worked for them wants to say a word, uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts or your stories. I won't put anybody on the spot, but I have a feeling that come on up. I used to, well, no, I used to call him Uncle Ben. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. A lot of people called him Uncle Ben when he came around, didn't they? I think so, didn't they? They did. I, yeah. no, no. I've heard gentle Ben is. I don't it? think, not yeah. in public. Well, I'm going to tell one out of school. Yeah, come on. <clears throat> well, two, two things about um, Ben Gilman. One, he was such a hard worker and such a caring person. So I have, I have a story about both. Uh, my brother was in, in the Navy, in, um, and they had an accident in Barcelona, Spain, and he was missing for a couple days. Um, ben Gilman was in touch with my mother, on a regular basis throughout the two or three day period. Um, fighting for her, trying to get answers from both the Navy uh, and from uh, whatever diplomats were involved, trying to get the answers. It was about 40 or 50 people were killed in the accident. So the compassion that he had for her and our family at that time uh, was never forgotten. On the hardworking side <clears throat> is, you know, when you're 18, 19 years old and you're out in the bar rooms and the bar is closed at four o'clock, you always went to breakfast. So you're still there at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the diner. And whenever Ben Gilman was in town, I would see Ben Gilman at the diner starting his day at 4.30 in the morning. And I was always amazed by that. And he was just as friendly at 4.30 in the morning, <laughs> talking to a bunch of people that just left bar rooms, as he was at a pancake breakfast or at a firehouse dinner. And uh, so those were all memories we all try to emulate as public officials to serve the public. But um, I, I've never seen anybody so hardworking and so dedicated to um, doing the work of a congressman or an assemblyman uh, on behalf of his constituents. So I want to say thank you to him. I want to say thank you to Congressman Maloney uh, for introducing the bill. And I'm sure it's going to have great success. I love that story. I love, that. I love, I love, I love both those stories, both because my, my, my yes, sir. Yeah. How was that grumpy old guy that came in with him all the time? That grumpy old guy was named Ralph Russo. <laughs> and he never picked up the check, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping Michael does. <laughs> such a, we're having such a nice event, right? <laughs> yeah, well, and now, and now we found the difference between Congressman Gilman and Congressman Maloney, which is that I would be more likely ending my day with Stefano at 4 a.m. than starting it with Congressman okay, Gilman. Okay, that was 18, 19 at the time. <laughs> I'm just saying, some of us are young at heart, yeah. So, uh, listen, um, this is a simple bill, but it's, uh, it's an important symbol of, uh, of, of remembrance. And uh, I, I really appreciate you all coming here, and I can tell you we're going to fight like heck to get it passed. Uh, do, are there questions, or you want to say something? Go ahead. I have two quick points. Um, one is, I brought this up at the dedication of uh, um, this street 
called Ben to Gilman Way in uh, Orchard Street for Penman. And it, a lot of us memories of Ben Gilman are at the Orange County Fair, where for 10 days Ben would be there and he would be at the booth and he would listen to anyone. It, it, it just, it was amazing. And, and you knew if it was the fair, it was Ben. <laughs> so, um, my other one quick point is if you can, um, please ask the post office that we're dedicating to Congressman Gilman to repaint the stripes in their parking lot and to fix that lock. Fix that <laughs> the work, the work continues. Be worthy of Congressman Gilman. Amen. Sure. Uh, right. Well, I get paid to do this, so you bet. Uh, happy to do it. And uh, although we have some other people, some ins here at the post office, but yeah, sure. And uh, I should tell you, we're passing. A, we're working on a farm bill right now. I mean, you know, um, one of the reasons I'm on the agriculture committee, right, is to continue the legacy that the work he did there as well. And one thing I didn't mention, and I should, I'd probably be remiss if I didn't. Um, you know, Congressman Gilman was one of the first Jewish Republican members of Congress, and the fact that he represented. Um, you know, a rural area was really quite a testament to his ability to overcome lines of difference, uh, which is uh, something I also admire. I mean, at today, today, in 2018 in the United States Congress, there are two Jewish Republican members of Congress, only two out of uh, 243. Um, so, so that, I think, shows you uh, what an extraordinary uh, individual he was, that he was able to be so beloved by his neighbors, be, be seen as such a, uh, a member of the community, um, but he was also making history as someone who's a little different than a lot of his neighbors. And, uh, and uh, that's something I take some inspiration from, too. Sure, come on up. Say something. Come on. We're just getting started. This may go longer than I thought. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We may need breakfast to start. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Paula Blumenau. Uh, I'm the president of Temple Sinai. And um, as a, a young, I, I was pretty young when, uh, when uh, Congressman Gilman was elected, so I probably wasn't really aware of that, but I do remember um, when uh, when Congressman Gilman would come into the temple, of course, which it was his spiritual home, um, and he brought Georgia along with him, which was so special. Um, and we had such wonderful moments with him where he was a family man and always that a congregant who was so supportive of our organization. So we appreciated the fact that as big, as larger than life character as he was in the world, um, here in Middletown at Temple Sinai, he found his spiritual home. And so we were honored to have him there. And you would never know, you know, the, everybody would come and shake hands and, and say hello. But then once we all sat down, we were all equal. And so that was, uh, I have that beautiful memory of him. So thank you for this honor mm -hmm. That's yeah, nice. for him. Thank you. That's cool. That's cool. All right. Well, uh, well, thank you very much. And I'm sure his, uh, I think he's three surviving children and 11 grandchildren will uh, would appreciate those remarks very much. Um, if there's nothing else, sir. Yeah, just one time, all politics are local. And mm. Ben Gilman, you know, was on the Republican committee for about 35 years, and chairman of a third ward Republican committee. And uh, we would meet on Saturdays because he was always in Washington, D.C. during the week. But his post office is located in the third ward. Ah, so, yeah. And it's very Isn't appropriate. That? Fantastic. He did any more where Ben ran awesome. than, uh, the, than the post office, and it was only about a couple blocks from his office. So uh, it's a great honor for him. That's he great carried to know. his petitions every year, too. Huh? He carried his petitions. petitions every year. That's yeah. great to know. Um, well, I want to be careful about how many good things I say about the Republican Party, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm sure, especially in an election year, <laughs> and carried away with this bipartisan thing. But uh, <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you very much. Uh, one of the things I think he would probably appreciate uh, is that is that after all the dust settles, we're all Americans, and uh, we'd do well to remember that more often. I think. Uh, listen, thank you all very much. It's been really nice. Yeah. Appreciate the. Thank you. Thank you.